곤충을 잡아먹는 핀치새의 부리는 짧고 단단했고 씨앗을 먹는 핀치새의 부리는 크고 두껍고 선인장을 먹는 핀치새의 부리는 가시보다 긴 부리였고 과일을 먹는 핀치새는 큰 부리를 갖고 있었지. 핀치새, 핀치새의 진화 비밀이 180년 만에 풀렸습니다. 스웨덴 옵살라대 연구팀은 핀치새 120마리의 유전자를 해독한 결과 하나의 조상을 갖고 있는 것으로 나타났다고 밝혔습니다. 스웨덴 연구팀은 핀치새의 유전자 중 ALX1의 염기 서열 배치 순서가 부리 모양을 결정하며 90만 년 전부터 부리 모양이 달라져 여러 종류로 진화한 사실을 알아냈습니다. 1835년 다윈은 갈라파고스 제도에서 부리가 다른 13종의 핀치새를 보고 생명체가 환경에 맞춰 진화한다는 자연 선택서를 떠올렸고 1859년 종의 기원이라는 책을 썼습니다. 이번 연구 결과는 국제학술지 네이처에 게재됐습니다. These volcanic islands are geologically young. They began rising from the ocean floor less than 5 million years ago. At first devoid of life, they now support a modest number of species. Among them, 13 species of finches, found in various combinations on the different islands. The birds live in diverse habitats. So here's an example of a bird we know intimately over the whole of its lifespan. The number is 5960. We know how many times it bred, which years it bred in, how many mates it had, how many offspring it produced, and then how many of those offspring themselves survived long enough to breed. In an amazingly short period of time, the Grants had measured evolution of beak size, not once, but twice, demonstrating that when birds encounter different environments, they will change over a very short amount of time. Over millions of years, changes like these, occurring throughout the Galapagos, generated all sorts of beak sizes and shapes. While unique to these remote islands, the history of the Galapagos finches offers a general insight into why the world is populated with so many species. The more diverse the environment, the more opportunities for evolutionary change to produce those new species. Over 150 years after Darwin first recognized their significance, these unassuming birds still illuminate how the great diversity of life arose and continues to evolve. So, Rosemary, what's the important difference between these birds? This little warbler finch with its very fine needle-like beak is perfect for picking off insects. This one is the woodpecker finch with a rather more robust beak. It concentrates on beetle larvae and, and termite larvae. Then we have the 
cactus finch with a much longer, sharp pointed beak, which probes into cactus flowers. And then these three species are the large, medium, and small ground finches. So, Sean, the basic idea is the beaks are tools, and you need the right tool for the right job. The finches look so different that Darwin first mistook them for entirely unrelated kinds of birds. How did the Galapagos end up with so many species of finches? In terms of the actual history of the finches of the Galapagos, um, there were many different possibilities. Different kinds of finches could have all come from the mainland separately, or the finches could have all evolved out there on the islands. And what do we know about that? Well, now we know from DNA evidence that all of the finches are more related to each other than any one is to a species on the mainland. And that tells us only one species arrived on the archipelago and diversified into the 13 species that we see nowadays in the Wait, and they tagged them for identification. The male is 17418. Year after year, they returned, at times tracking over 1,000 finches. Started off with a big food supply of small seeds, medium seeds, large seeds. As these small seeds became very scarce, they had to turn increasingly to the large and hard seeds. Well, only birds with large beaks can crack open these woody, spiny fruits. The birds with the smallest beaks had the most trouble. They were scraping about amongst the rocks and their plumage got so worn that they could barely fly. That year, over 80% of the medium ground finches died. We would go around looking for birds that had died, and it's very sad to pick up a bird and say, 3972, oh no, not that bird, oh. When they inventoried the surviving medium ground finches, they discovered that one trait had made the greatest difference between life and death. Well, I'm showing here a distribution of beak depths of the population in 1976. The survivors of this group, they found an even greater surprise. The average beak depth was more than 4% larger than the previous generation natural selection had changed the average beak size. Could you have ever imagined measuring and observing something like that? The rains changed the vegetation on the island, such that two years later, when drought struck, larger seeds became scarce. The birds with larger beaks now had difficulty picking up the more abundant food the small seeds produced by the vines. That year, many more finches with small beaks survived, and their offspring inherited smaller beaks. So the selection had swung in the opposite direction, and evolution had occurred as a result. In an amazingly short period of time, the grants had measured evolution of beak size, not once, but twice demonstrating that when birds encounter different environments, they will change over a very short amount of time. Over millions of years, changes like these, occurring throughout the Galapagos, generated all sorts of beak sizes and shapes. But that's only part of the story. How did finches with different beaks become distinct species? Species are defined as populations whose members don't interbreed. So how does one species split into two? A typical scenario is that two populations become separated geographically and undergo enough change in their respective habitats that if or when they come into contact again, they do not mate. So in the Galapagos, the grants asked, what keeps different species of finches from mating? 
We were very conscious that on any given island, the different species sing very different songs. This is what a cactus finch sounds like. Whereas the medium ground finch sounds very much like this. So to see if songs keep the species apart, the Grants and their student Laureen Ratcliffe played each species' songs through a loudspeaker. When we played back the cactus finch song, cactus finch came. We responded to songs of their own species. The Grants looked at whether finches might also choose mates based on appearance. So they put out stuffed female specimens to see if males would respond. Clearly they could discriminate. The male vigorously courted a female of his own species, completely ignored the other one. The male's only... The most likely scenario is that two million years ago, a single finch population arrived from the mainland. When their descendants reached another island, they faced new conditions. As those isolated populations adapted to their surroundings, their traits changed. If the changes included traits involved in mating, and the populations came into contact again, they no longer mated. They had become distinct species. While unique to these remote islands, the history of the Galapagos finches offers a general insight into why the world is populated with so many species. The more diverse the environment, the more opportunities for evolutionary change to produce those new species. Over 150 years after Darwin first recognized their significance, these unassuming birds still illuminate how the great diversity of life arose and continues to evolve. <laughs>